Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. I wanted to put out a contrasting video highlighting some positive reinforcement trainers. A lot of them were suggested by you actually, so that we have a side-by-side -side comparison to help more clearly demonstrate why positive reinforcement is the current standard of care. I already have some videos defining the four quadrants and also covering the immense amounts of research that we have about positive reinforcement, punishment, dominance theory, and the like. So if this is something that you aren't already familiar with, you will need to go back and watch those videos first. It will help to give you some base understanding. I will link all of those videos in the doobly-doo for you. All right, let's dive in. One show that was recommended to me, it's Victoria Stillwell, It's Me or the Dog. Now let's see what's happening here. Okay. She has major issues with Sophia. With Sophia. Uh, so ideally I would never even ask the dogs to be put in that situation. I, I guess they're doing it for video proof sake for the show, but you could see the first dog was cowering from the get-go because that dog's been uh, repeatedly on the receiving end of this and at least the people have leashes on so that no fight actually happened. Management is key. We had a dog fight about three weeks ago. Oh. Olivia attacked Sophia and Olivia ended up getting just banged up. I had blood all over my leg. Blood was on the wall. Were there deep bites in the dog? Olivia or? had uh, probably six or seven bleeding bites and one big uh, puncture wound. How many dog fights has Olivia been in? Uh, this is a serious situation. Could, could be 13, 14. So wow. 13, 14 yeah, dog yeah. fights. Wow. This is as serious as it gets. Yeah. There is a long history of fighting here. Because of her aggression, Olivia has been sequestered in the bedroom for the past two years. During two time, years. Frank has established a rotation system that keeps the problem dogs uh, from Right. These people haven't had help, I guess, and so they've been doing it for two years. I let them out, then I let Olivia out. Right. Smart. Then management. Garmin and Olivia. Oh. Okay. Once I'm back, I'm putting Olivia up and I play with them in the backyard a little bit and starts over. But it takes uh, quite a chunk yeah. out of my daily life. A lot Absolutely. Of I'd like to meet Olivia. All right. Okay. Come on. Before Olivia can come out of her room, Rex and Sophia have to go in the backyard. See, and this is all part of smart management. You never set the dogs up to fail. You don't ever do it. There's no reason. I would like to see Sophia and Olivia's response to each other, but obviously in a safe way. Yes. I don't want, obviously, the dogs to make contact, but it's important for me to see the body language between them. I'm a little bit yeah, here, but we'll see what happens. So and she the backs dogs up. Saw each other. Sophia gave a lot of appeasement gestures. She did. She her head. Avoiding. She her back, basically yeah. demonstrating to Olivia. I don't want I'm this. No to you. Exactly. Don't attack me. That's correct. Olivia, on the other hand, gave her a hard stare. Mm -hmm. He's really staring her down. Okay, take her away now. Come on. Okay. So what is important here is that. Uh, Victoria did not allow her to go over threshold and try to attack the other dog. I would have intervened before this. However, the dog did not go over threshold, so that's a good thing. This is a dog that has attacked repeatedly, and what concerns me is that she's taking absolutely no notice of Sophia's appeasement signals. Exactly. She's ignoring them. That exhibits stillness like that. Mm -hmm. Looks. Mm hmm. You would just know that if she wasn't on the leash, that freezing, that staring. It's scary. Exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The stillness yep. is a precursor to an explosion. And that hard stare. <sighs> the most difficult one, I think, is Olivia. I was very concerned with the behavior that I witnessed between Sophia I am too. 
and Olivia. And this is very, very different than the multi-dog household that we saw Milan in. Those dogs were not doing any of this. They were simply dogs that had pain that wasn't being addressed through a veterinarian and who had been punished, which was causing the aggression. That's different than this. Let's be realistic about this. We can probably get to a point with the rehabilitation, but you will never ever be able to trust those dogs together. True. Nor what she's saying is correct. We have research around bite severity and frequency and how that correlates to rehabilitation. And after bites of this severity and this frequency, it's unlikely a dog can ever be fully rehabilitated. So she is being very straightforward with these people to manage their expectations. Will you probably ever be able to have those dogs off leash together in the same room? True. Wow because this is a management and a safety issue. But that's, that's the truth. I have to commend your timeshare system, as it were, because mm -hmm. that is the responsible thing to do to keep the dogs safe. However, it's not great for a dog to be socially isolated like that. True. It's not good for her psychologically. It's a quality of life First, problem. Victoria wants to give Olivia some respite from her room. Olivia's quite an isolated dog, and she lives an isolated life. She needs to have a little bit of play in the backyard. I want to use the fox on a stick for Olivia, because that dog's got prey drive. And dogs she does. with prey drive can't resist chasing a fluffy thing. Olivia! The toy fox is a huge success. <laughs> <laughs> so note that this form of exercise compared to pulling that tire can be very carefully titrated for the dog. You can move it as slowly or as quickly, as far and as close as you need to for the individual dog and their individual fitness and um, orthopedic soundness, etc. needs. This gives this dog an appropriate outlet for this chasing behavior that she's doing with the other dogs. So we're saying, instead of chasing the other dogs, you can chase this stuffed animal instead. And that's something that Elena <laughs> oh, she's so happy. And so look at this dog's body language compared to the dogs in the episode we watched him on. This dog's tail is up, she is prancing, her ears are forward, she is not avoiding any of these people. She's like, this is a great game. And if we can use this as a reward for doing behaviors we want from the dog, then that can be a powerful reinforcer as well. Safe way. And it's going to calm them down a lot mm -hmm. in other areas of their lives. You see, this dog feels a lot of frustration. There's yeah. a lot of stress that comes from being locked up and isolated. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that she gets to do this every day. Great. I don't think I've seen her that happy in a long time. Look what a smiling face she's got. That's great. That the way to start the training is to have both dogs on neutral territory. Nope. Very good. So here we're talking about management. It's not just take the dogs in the neighborhood as a group close together in the area where they have bad experiences. It's let's go somewhere brand new. Let's manage this. And I'll bet that they're going to start with a huge distance between these dogs because the dog that's now showing all that appeasement and fear, that dog also needs a lot of care because we have to teach that dog that it will not f have anything to fear when it sees the other dog. No, no, keep them at a distance. When right. The dogs set at a wide distance from each other. Victoria exactly. First works at breaking Olivia's death stare. When Olivia first came in, again, she was doing that hard stare. Her head went down. She was being intimidating. Break the stare. I wouldn't allow her to do it, though. Each time she did it, she got taken off in the other direction. Try not to yank her, but just break that stare. Bring her back again. Yeah, see, because we don't want her to feel punished when she sees the other dog, that will make her aggression worse. But we do need to find that distance where she can work around the other dog without doing this staring behavior. When she is focused on Sophia, I'm just going to come in front of her and break that stare and tell a good girl for breaking the stare. And I also want to get Olivia to do some pacification signals to Sophia so that Sophia's not so worried by Olivia's presence. 
I'm throwing treats on the ground so that Olivia looks like she's doing the displacement activity of sniffing. Smart. And again, this is teaching the dog that's been attacked, hey, we're going to manage this that you will not be attacked again. Again, that's less threatening to Sophia. Because her ears are I back, she's worried. Olivia in Sophia's presence by making her sit, by making her watch me. Get it focused on you rather than on Sophia. When both dogs... So again, here, what we're doing is we're giving the dog a different behavior to do. If she's watching her person, she cannot be staring at the other dog inappropriately. We then walked them, and it was wonderful to see them both being able to focus on other things other than each Look other. Look at how quickly they've been able to get significantly closer together in a safe manner without escalating anything. And the dogs are both looking relatively relaxed. Don't let Olivia stare her down. Yeah, there's, it's not perfect. That's okay, that's good. Never miss a chance to praise them. It's true. Okay. You always want to reinforce the behavior you want. I learned that it is very important that they have a positive experience. Yes. Together. Exactly. Face as much as possible. Allow the dogs to just hang out at a distance so they're not right together, mm -hmm. like this, and just to live in each other's good. Oh my God. That's, That's wonderful. Good girl. The dogs choose dogs to lay down and relax good. further. Olivia and Sophia made good progress in Victoria's absence. So she wants to up the ante with another meeting. Now this is much harder because the backyard is their territory. And both dogs are quite protective over that territory. I just want to see the reaction. Because eventually, you're going to have to be doing this in the backyard as well as inside the home. This is going to be a new experience for both of them. So notice how they set it up with the dogs on leash and with a significant amount of distance between them for safety and to prevent the dog, hopefully, from going over threshold. That's the, that's the goal here. Safety. Victoria wants to keep hold of Olivia. Smart. Keep hold. Now there's some staring and lip licking. So they back up further, which is smart. They increase more distance. Ask her to do something else. Wonderful. Sophia wants to watch ground. because she's nervous. The treats on the ground so it looked like Olivia was sniffing because that's so much less intimidating than the stare. The fact that Sophia is taking food in Olivia's presence, which she didn't do beforehand, is really good. If a dog is too stressed, they'll stop eating. So whenever your dog stops eating, you need to change something to make it a less stressful environment so that their brain can relax enough that they're able to learn a new and different behavior. This is pretty Wow, awesome. relaxed dog. A dog that is stressed out, freaked out, cannot do that. That is correct. Look at her. Oh, so cute. Notice how there was no punishment and because they taught the dogs, hey, here's the behavior I want you to do when you see the other dog, then you start to get increased relaxed behaviors, you reduce the risk of aggression, things are just so much better. So watching those videos was for the most part quite enjoyable for me. I hope that seeing this behavior modification using positive reinforcement and how I've explained slash reacted to it is helpful to you in understanding why this is the current standard of care. There is absolutely no excuse or reason to train animals using fear and force and punishment. There just isn't. If you have a topic suggestion you'd like me to cover in the future or a popular person that you'd like me to cover in a future video, don't hesitate to leave the suggestion in the comments below. I look forward to reading them. And I put out a new video most Fridays, so I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.